Today we're comparing the Nikon Z50 versus the Sony A6600. Why? Well, because crop censored cameras make the world go round. Full frame might be the format that gets all of the attention these days, but APS-C slash super 35 millimeter sensors are where people go when they have real work to get done. Real work gets done here. Now it's no secret that I really like what both of these companies have been releasing as far as their mirrorless lines go. And smaller, easy to use cameras definitely are better options for those of us creating online content. So which one comes out on top? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. It's so nice to talk about smaller cameras again. Now, there is a trend that all of like the new awesome cameras continue to just get bigger and bigger and more and more expensive, but small cameras like these, huh, they just make life so much easier. And really quickly, before we start the video proper, I would like to thank my friends over at BH Photo for loaning me both of these cameras for the next few weeks to make these series of videos on. Now, if you'd like to get either of these cameras, there will be links in the description below. Okay. Time to get to it. If you don't know anything about either of these cameras, let's cover some very basic specs to get us all on the same page. Man, we haven't done this motion. The same page. The Sony a6600 has a 24 megapixel APS-C sized CMOS sensor. That sensor is housed inside the venerable Sony E-mount. Check it out right there. For video, it can record up to 4K 30 frames per second and does slow motion up to 120 frames per second in 1080p. The Nikon Z50, on the other hand, has a 20.9 megapixel APS-C sensor, which fits inside the, this is comical, look how large this lens mount is, the comically large Nikon Z mount. For video, this can also record up to 4K 30 frames per second and, much like the a6600, will also do 1080p in up to 120 frames per second. Now, I do want to make a quick note of differences here spec-wise. When recording in 4K 30 frames per second, you know, the best frames per second, if you do that on the Sony, you will get a 1.2-ish times crop, where there is no additional crop when recording in 4K of any nature on the Z50. The autofocus on the a6600 uses the fantastic and class-leading Sony phase detection system, which will do eye autofocus tracking while in video recording mode. The Z50 has a similar, but not as powerful phase detection system that is limited to faces, but like I mentioned in the a7 III video, don't get too wrapped around the axle here. We will talk more about autofocus later. So those are the basic specs we're gonna cover. We will talk about specs and features as they come up, but those are the overall video specs. So I compare all cameras against three main categories, video quality, ease of use, and the overall ecosystem. And First on that list was video quality. Like I said in the spec overview, both cameras have basically the exact same recording capabilities. The real major difference in video quality is the Nikon Z50 has a 30 minute recording limit while the A6600 does not. It can record as long as it has power and media, which is, I mean, that is important. It is a big step that Sony's been taking in removing the recording limits on their cameras coming out the last year. But how does the image quality actually look? I think both actually look pretty good. And both of these do have 8-bit codecs, so you're not gonna get anything like 10-bit, you're not gonna get anything very powerful or high megabit per second footage out of it, but for 8-bit, it looks pretty good. Now, if you do want a little more leverage out of your footage, the A6600 does have a couple of the Sony log profiles, while the Z50, I mean, it has a flat image, but it doesn't give you like Z-log, so you don't get that flexibility in post. And for the price, that's a weakness in both of these cameras. In this price range, there are cameras like the GH5 and the X-T3, which can both do internal 4K at 10-bit and 422. Back to these cameras though, because that's what the video is about. I do actually like the colors coming out of the Z50 more. The skin tones in these new Nikon cameras is fantastic. And like the Z6, which was one of my favorite cameras of 2018, uh, there's a lot of that inside of this camera in a smaller, cheaper body that uses SD cards and not crazy expensive XQD cards. The 6600 isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination and could be used perfectly well and several do use this to run an online video operation, but it, it doesn't have the easy to get warm skin tones that the Nikon has. Where the Z50 does fall behind though is, we already talked about it, is in the picture profile. Yes, it does have them and yes, they are okay, but like most video I get out of the Z cameras, you do have to be wary of the standard picture profile. It is 
very, very contrasty straight out of the box. All of the footage that you've seen today overlaid on top of this with the Z50 is in the standard picture profile with the contrast turned all the way down because it is aggressive. So the image quality is good on both cameras, but the more important question, especially if you're gonna be hanging these videos any place that people are gonna be listening to them, right? Because we listen to these videos, is how crispy is that audio? And that's right. I'm gonna co-op crispy and turn it into an audio term from now on. You you just try and stop me. Both of these cameras do have a 3.5 millimeter audio in jack with the ability to manually dial in the internal gain to get a little crispier, see, there it is again, sounds and let the microphone do the heavy lifting if able. But that's where the equality falls off. The Z50, much like the Z6, does not have the best internal preamps. So I would recommend a powered microphone like the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus or the Deity D3 Pro and let the microphone do most of the heavy lifting. The A6600, much like Sony's other cameras, has fantastic preamps and I find the audio to be perfectly clean, I almost said crispy again, even when I'm using a tiny little Rode Video Micro. Now that's not to say you couldn't use the Video Micro with the Z50, you can, you just won't get the same results. Another huge advantage that the Sony has is if you are looking to build this out into a system, you can use an adapter like the K3M and get two powered XLR ports without needing any extra wires or needing to use a separate audio recorder. And these, ad these adapters are so good that they absolutely bias camera comparisons in favor of Sony and Panasonic because I much prefer XLR audio in every case I can get. We're using the DMW XLR1 right now. So all this is all great, you know, great. We've got, the picture looks good, the audio's fine. Ease of use matters a lot, like a lot, a lot. You've heard me say this plenty of times, but we've certainly passed the good enough for online video points. So having a camera be part of the team that can run itself is now a huge, like it's just a major deciding factor for me. Here it's absolutely the opposite of earlier. I love, I love the Z50 for ease of use. This might be my new third favorite camera body of all time. First is the EOS R, second is the GH5, but the Z50 is fantastic. For such a small camera, it feels so good in the hand. And I, I don't wanna gush about this too much because the Z50 will get its own dedicated video, but the feel of this camera is insane. Not only does it feel super high quality, but it's got plenty of buttons and dials and you could just change everything from single-handedly. Like that's a very big part of a camera is being able to change everything single-handedly. The A6600 does have two fully customizable buttons on top and it feels better than any other Sony crop sensor camera due to its inclusion of the Z battery. They had to rework this hand grip because of that and it does feel really great. Not only does the feel really go well for the Z50, but the screen is fully touch enabled so you can easily tap through to change the settings as needed. Whereas on the A6600, it does have a flip up screen, but it's only capable of touch for focusing. The Z50 screen articulates down. So unless you specifically buy something like a small rig adapter, you can't really use this with a tripod. But on the A6600, the flip up screen, you still need a small rig adapter or something to relocate the hot shoe for the microphone. So I honestly, I think it's kind of a wash. And I know I'm in the minority here. I know that. But I do really like the flip down screen when it comes to vlogging because the microphone can so easily sit on top of the camera. And this could just be me because I don't really ever use gorilla pods or small tripods anyway. I just handhold the camera. So that doesn't matter as much to me. But if you haven't tried, if you haven't actually tried a flip down screen camera before, don't knock it because I actually, it's not that bad. The biggest difference though between the two ease of use wise is not the stabilization because the A6600 does have built in IBIS and the Z50 has electronic image stabilization. It's not the screens, it's the autofocus. The A6600 has the best continuous video autofocusing system on the market today. I would stack this up against any other camera on the market today. And this, I mean, it will easily track your eye, even if your face is pretty darn small in the live view. I just, I wish this system was on every camera out there. It would make it so much easier to make any of my videos. It's. It's the best. The Z50 does have continuous face tracking autofocus and video, but if you're using this as a vlogging camera and you flip the screen down, 
you might have some problems. And this actually really confused me and I didn't know how to fix this when I first got the camera. But by default, when you flip the screen down, the camera turns into like a selfie mode. Now in this mode, it does not do continuous video autofocus. I don't mean that it just doesn't do face tracking because it'll show you the box. It just stops doing any continuous video autofocus and no matter what the settings, it won't work. If you actually want continuous video autofocus, that's the third time I've said it. Uh, if you want that, you actually go have to go into the menu and turn off the selfie mode. And that doesn't make any sense in any way, shape or form because since you can turn the mode off, I won't ding them too hard. But if the mode stops key features, maybe don't have it turned on by default or why even I just don't, I really don't understand that. Let's put all of these words to action with a quick vlogging test. <laughs> okay, and welcome to the vlogging test of the Nikon Z50 versus the Sony A6600. And you can see the two cameras right there. So yeah, unlike the A7 III video that we did earlier in the week, I do have both of these cameras up at the same time because I can't use the same lens on both and I can't use the same audio device on both. So we might as well try them both out at the same time. And it is still freezing, freezing out here at the coast and the wind has definitely picked up. So yeah, this is the vlogging test of the two cameras. Um, something that I'm noticing just doing this vlogging test out here, the Nikon Z50 needed a V90 battery. Like I had to put my Sony Tough G card, like the, the highest end SD card I have to get the, uh, the Z50 working. Whereas the Sony, so it must have a higher bit rate. Uh, than I was planning on. But the Sony A6600 is over here. It does have in-body image stabilization built in, whereas the Z50 does not. Both of the lenses do have stabilization and the Z50 will be a little bit wider because the Z50 does have 16 millimeter at the wide end as opposed to the 18 on the Sony. And I am, man, it is cold out here today. But yeah, this is the vlogging test between both cameras. And man, it is a beautiful day. So I'm gonna get back to recording the rest of these videos. You go back into having a great day indoors and watching the rest of the Everyday Dad as he is nice and warm inside because I'm the idiot that is outside. All right, back to the video. <laughs> and we're back. So we've seen how easy they are to use and what the image quality looks like, but a camera isn't just built on the body alone. The ecosystem and upgrade path are very, very important. And the tables, the turn tables turn again. Nothing else in the mirrorless marketplace can stand up to the Sony E-mount. Micro Four Thirds comes really close, but the real benefit is if you buy an E-mount lens, you can use it on any E-mount body, full frame, APS-C, anything. Some of those lenses might have a crop if you use them like a full frame lens on a APS-C body, you might get that 1.5 times crop. But not only is there a full complement of lenses, they're still putting out niche lenses like super zooms that are like $15,000. They continue to update old ones. I mean, the Sony system is built and it can work for any focal length. The Z50 is Nikon's attempt to do the same because now the Z50, the Z6, the Z7, they all share the same mount. And I seriously applaud them for that. More manufacturers need those shared lens mounts to keep us firmly in place in their ecosystems if we have crop and full frame cameras. It's just not there yet. Yes, they currently have my favorite 35 millimeter prime and 24 to 70 ever made, but those are full frame lenses. The Z50 only has two current APS-C lenses, the kit 16 to 50 and the larger 50 to 200. Great lenses. It's kind of anemic overall, but I can't, I, you know, I cannot wait to see what they do with this camera that is 70% mount. Whew, that was a lot of stuff, but at the end of the day, so what, right? Which of these two do I recommend for the online video producer? Some of you get sick of me saying content creator. Now I really, really like the Z50. The body is awesome, the colors are awesome, and I'm really coming around to the flip down screen. I actually like this camera more than I like the Z6 because it uses SD cards. It just, it is a better, more compact body. But the lenses just aren't there yet. I personally hate adapting lenses, so I never really use that as an option. And the native stuff, Nikon just hasn't released enough of them yet, especially if you're looking for lenses that take advantage of the small body. This 16 to 50 is amazing, but I wouldn't recommend buying into a system for one lens. I easily, easily recommend the A6600 in this scenario. Better autofocus, IBIS, longer battery life, flip up screen, the best autofocus you're gonna find and the best lens options out there. It's a little bit more money, but the A6600 easily takes the crown here. So if you are now convinced to try the Sony ecosystem, but you're not exactly sure which camera to get, I bet you'd like the video where I compared the A7 III to the A6600 in a family battle of the ages. Click right here, right here, right here. We'll put the A6600 here. Click on the A6600 to watch right now. Click right, look, I'm doing the wave, I'm doing the wave. <laughs> Thanks for watching.